What is up, everybody? I am here with the new Fit Controller by MIDI Plus uh, that Waze is touting as one of the best MIDI controllers for their LV1 system. And I've got to say, so far, initial impressions, it's pretty great. Uh, build quality is solid. This thing is a couple pounds, uh, which definitely, you know, flight cases and stuff like that will make it a little heavier, um, but it's solid. Uh, the buttons, knobs, faders all feel great. They're not, you know, world-class epic faders or anything like that, uh, but they are great for what they are, what they do, and why you would want something like this. Um, one of my favorite features um, is you can either run this in standalone or have it synced uh, to a specific fader layer. So as I change those, uh, they will change. Um, there's a touch and turn knob, so if I jump into, uh, let's see here, and grab uh, something like a threshold or something like that, I can grab this and fine tune on the touch and turn knob. I can adjust those settings. Uh, I should just tap it on the screen, and then I've got it there. I can adjust it. It's easy. So. Uh, also, this uh, main fader kind of thing right here, I love that that is assignable. Uh, so I run left center subs or left fill subs, whatever, uh, and control it all from a DCA and so or VCA or whatever control group, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I, I have that right here. So this is my main fader, all three of them. Uh, so I love that. So the way that works is here on my um, master's page, I've got jump back to that um i do have that uh that fader right there linked here and that is my fill right all that right there so that is what is going on there um you can um spill jump between custom and not custom layers um with these buttons right here sorry i wasn't pointing at that uh so custom layers this toggles between uh the factory layers and the custom layers uh and these are illuminated purple when they are custom which is nice uh flip and spill uh, are similar to the buttons up here except extremely way more easy to get to so i might actually use those features right now i haven't even tried because honestly those buttons suck so um uh, new for new snapshots, and then you can assign these to whatever you want. Uh, and these jump between an encoder mode, uh, between pan and uh, gain. However, uh, in this right now, I've got it flipped to uh, digital input, so there's no gain. Uh, if I flip back, for instance, so now that gain is set there. It does a change when, and show me the value as I adjust it, which is nice. Uh, tap tempo, giant button, you can't miss it when you're tapping it. So that's great. Uh, top row up here uh, switches between uh, a select button for the channel. So if I select those different buttons, they select down here and they choose the screens up there. So if I was in uh, channel view here and jump over to, uh, let's say my bass guitar right here, I've got bass there, jump over to keys, keys comes up, electric guitars, a uh, VCA, obviously that's not gonna show anything, uh, vocal, something like that will populate, which is great. Um, but then you can also jump this over to the user buttons and they do say what they are. So the first eight are mute groups and then you've got the eight user layers. Uh, currently I've got it signs, tap tempo, um, let's see, what is this? Uh, store scene, save scene, or save session, excuse me, and flip AB inputs. Uh, so I'm gonna just flip that back here while I'm here. Um, I actually like not using this in user mode buttons, uh, and I'd rather have the colors of what they are. However, these colors you can start to see here, especially in this fluorescent lighting. Uh, so this and this are both uh, DCA, VCAs. So, but then these are channels, and the colors on that are kind of hard to see. Um, this is a group effect. Um, this is a channel, but it looks, oh, it's the channel that's selected is more white, which, okay, that's something. Uh, but the, the resolution of colors is mimicking what you see up on the main mixer. Uh, I just have a beef with Waze right now about the ability to color this. I love colors and I want to see them here. Uh, I want to color code my stuff so I can know when I'm looking at certain things, it is certain channels or whatever types of channels, like all the drums are one color, the guitars are one color, keys, tracks, whatever, vocals, 
but unfortunately you can't do that and the colors in this profile here are pretty much matching this which they're not great let's be honest uh other things so one of the things i noticed uh on the pan so if i want to pan this vocal obviously it gives me the information there and it's uh looks like it's in increments of five which doesn't really mathematically line up so much with what's on the screen um, but it's kind of close but you can't like get it back to center um, so if i look back up here if i actually press that button i would expect it to jump back up to center but it doesn't uh, but luckily center is center pretty well on that thing and because it's midi it is sending the exact like when this says zero it's making sure that that is actually at zero. So that's nice. Uh, solo, mute buttons, all that stuff works great. Um, for instance, if I jump over to user and hit mute groups, they will blink, much like our Yamaha friends have become accustomed to. Um, that's a thing. Uh, if they're not in mute group, then uh, just solid for the mute. Uh, if you do mute a DCA, like I just did, this band one right here, uh, this will mute all the things in that DCA. Now, unfortunately, fortunately, whatever, um, my DCAs are actually controlling the, um, the groups. So if I were to go look at my group layer, there would they all are flashing um, because I have the DCA, VCA, whatever you want to call it, uh, muted there. So next up, uh, spill function. Um, I've had a little bit of time to play with this. So uh, if I select, so right now I've got my drums uh, DCA selected. If I hit spill on that, it'll show me the members of that DCA, which in this case um, are just my drums, my drum smash, and my drum verbs. Uh, so if I hit my band uh, DCA here, if I select that and hit spill down in the corner here, um, it'll spill all of the mostly groups and effects, but a couple of significant instruments, things like that. So I've got um, in my band, I've got bass, drums, drum smash, tracks, keys, guitars, guitar smash, those are both groups, uh, and then my four effects here. So, um, and again, color thing, man, in input versus group, real hard to see. It's weird, but uh, so you've got the ability to do that with spill and toggle that on and off way easier than the button up in the corner here. So that's that. So I want to demonstrate the flip functionality here. So there's a button on the thing that says flip. And if you have uh, follow aux sends flip um, enabled, it'll show you the faders down here. Uh, if you have follow aux master flip, that would mean whatever... Um, aux level is uh, there, then it's there. So if I take that back, this is my um, mains here. If I flip, it'll select, um, I hit spill at the same time there, sorry. If I hit flip, it'll go back to, um, this is now the aux one send. So for instance, if I jump back up here, um, I've got my list of monitors. Uh, this screen automatically comes up when I hit that. Um, when I click away and off of that, uh, it will put the faders back. So when I hit flip down here, changes the screen, and then I can select this and it will show up whatever faders I have. If I select um, something different, um, I can choose, uh, I can either be on my custom faders or, um, so like for instance here, I'm gonna flip to, and then select my vocal effects. So now this is the things sending to my vocal effect. Here's my overall send level and all that. Um, if I select any of these layers, it'll cancel out a flip mode. So the only way to switch between what you're actually sends on fadering uh, is to select them up here on the screen. So just so you're aware of that. So as I mentioned, the build quality of this thing is pretty impressive. However, there is one thing I noticed uh, about the um, the faders. I kind of had a flashback to the M32, X32 days uh, when it comes to fader layer switching. Uh, so for instance, if I hit one, uh, so if I just flip down these layers, you can see some of them snap to it quite well. And some of them take a minute to get to where it was trying to go. See, it just went into flip mode again. I don't know what that's about. So this is clearly a little bit of a bug. Uh, when I was mixing before too, I was up here on layer one and uh, li live audio come, well, not live audio, virtual sound check come through. Um, and I had like 
fingers on my band and vocal DCAs here, my lead vocal, and then my guitar is over here, and I was getting, I was adjusting, coming in and out of a guitar solo, and then all of a sudden this thing just went boop. Uh, if that was a live show, it was a guitar, so it wouldn't have mattered that much, but if that was a vocal or some other VIP channel, that would have been bad. I think it was some sort of MIDI error, um, maybe because I was adjusting a whole bunch of faders at the same time for quite a while. Uh, I'm not sure what that was about, but like I said, when we're flipping layers here, it's just a little bit of a, just, it's like, it gets close and then slows down and gets it perfect. Um, Depending on what kind of reaction times you're used to, this could be fine, this could be super annoying. Um, I don't think it's gonna matter too much for me in my workflow, but I just wanna demonstrate what I found there. So I wanna demonstrate setting up the fit controller. There's no real good videos on this, so here's a quick one. Uh, power up, boop. Obviously I've plugged power and uh, USB signal into my computer and the fit controller. Uh, I've got it booted up and then I've got LV1 on up here. Uh, from there, what we do with LV1 is we drop down the little controls area. We go to MIDI plus fit. And once we put it in there, we need to hit the little sprocket and set, and this is where it screwed me up, uh, fit, the, the one that just says fit, to both input and output because this is a two-directional conversation. As soon as I put both of those in there, this has sprung to life. And there we go. Now, from there, um, you can say which... Um, workflow you want it to, to follow. So standalone mixer one or mixer two. My application, I'm trying mixer one for now. Uh, follow, send, flip. I don't really actually need that, so I'm gonna turn that off. And then I actually want my master fader to be a DCA of my all my mains, because I feed my subs and my fills separately. Uh, and then let's see, next scene, I'm actually gonna do that to be store scene. Uh, store scene, not new scene, because uh, I like to see, I like to store that and update the session uh, frequently. Um, and then Alt is fine for the record button. Uh, pan gain, you can't adjust that there at all. Uh, just what the uh, button here flips between. Uh, so I imagine in future renditions, they might make that choosable and option there. Um, if you don't see fit controller on the top, uh, try, try again, try a different USB port, try a different USB cable, something like that. Um, if this isn't coming alive, that means you probably don't have those two saying fit, which is what I did, because I'm an idiot. But uh, regardless, if you don't see that or anything doesn't work, uh, try, try again, try turning it off, restarting, all that. Also, make sure that um, Wave Central and Waves LV1 is up to date uh, because they did release the fit functionality after version 11 came out. So be sure to check that out. So in my typical two screen setup, I like to have uh, my main mix layer happening here and then um, other things up here. So sometimes I'm sitting on drums and I can grab individual drum channels if I'm mixing. A lot of times I'm going in and out of plugins, so I'll have the channel screen up um, and then you know I can select different uh, things down here. Um, most of the time I end up flipping back to the mixer and then being like, oh, I need to make a plugin change. So I'll hit a plugin and then I'll adjust it and then I'll go back to mixer. Uh, Cause as I select faders down here, um, I actually really don't like the screen up here flashing around doing different things. Um, so that's kind of my workflow. Uh, I put mixer one down here, mixer two up here. Uh, when it comes to the fit, uh, I don't know what I would do if I owned one. Uh, right now I mixed with it here um, I was actually sitting and that's fine and comfortable, but normally I would want to stand, uh, which actually this distance um, puts me quite a ways away from this other screen. And I've got to lean forward quite a bit because I don't have 20 foot long arms. So um, so that's, that's probably not going to work for it to be out here for me. Um, I would probably want to put it here. So the next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to leave this connected in here, um, but just carefully put the foam pad and the fit controller on top of it. Uh, bring this back closer to me and see how mixing that way feels to me. Uh, so I've set the fit controller up on top of the screen. I've moved my DigiGrid D inside of here where I've got my headphone volume control and then I've moved it closer. So now when I reach out the screen, like this is about full arm extension here. Oops, don't do that. Um, lock mode. Um, so 
this here feels way better. Again, I'm on the OCD Labs case. Uh, I've got a DigiGrid D and a PC in here. Um, fit controller on top, screen on top of that. Uh, and it works well. Obviously, uh, in a normal scenario, I would not have another screen there at all. Do not try this at home. I do not advise this. Um, but uh, for testing purposes, this feels good. Um, I don't know if this actually came with the rack uh, rails or not, um, but I would actually get those, put those on here, and then find some way to attach that down in there, uh, and then create a foam pad that goes on here that then the screen would fold down on top of. Obviously, this is not designed to close at the moment with that extra screen in there, but um, way, way better to mix on. Um, I liked being able to look up and adjust things and come right back to the faders uh, real quickly. Uh, I didn't really feel like I was missing having the second screen. Um, I can certainly jump uh, between mixers. Um, so I could have mixer two up here with a certain layer if I wanted to, um, and then have mixer one with my normal custom layers that I'm familiar with here. Um, but, uh, but so far I've, I've really liked having it here. Um, would I go out and spend 11 or $1,200 or however much this costs? Um, honestly, I probably would uh, in time. I don't think I'm gonna jump out right now and buy it because I've got some other stuff to buy. Uh, and I'm not gigging at the moment, much like most of us. But uh, I do really like it. Um, I think I'd be willing to forego the second touch monitor. Um, if there was a way for me to safely transport it, uh, I may keep it on like a stand next to it or something like that, just as a, like maybe patching or some sort of something, um, just cause I own it. But if I didn't own it, I would only just buy one. I'd mount it up here and then I'd have the fit controller down here. Uh, obviously I've got my Mac on over here for virtual sound check and uh, smart and background music and all of that fun stuff. Um, I actually really, 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 really like the workflow of having my, um, keyboard right here uh, so that if I need to jump down and mouse something or type something it's all right here when the fit controller was down in front of this uh, I actually didn't really like that I liked having it off I mean I didn't like having it off to the side I like having it right here so there's another reason why I'd probably mount the fit controller here all right let me know if you have any questions feel free to like comment subscribe do all the normal social media stuff uh, I am on Instagram uh, where I post most of my stuff so check it out